Continuing on in our YouTube question series or Q&A series, we have another question from the subscriber. B Terry Fit asks, I'm new to cameras and invested in the A6600, great camera by the way, I love that one, to shoot fitness videos. I shoot in a small area, 225 square feet, with the Tamron 18 to 300. Would you suggest a better lens option? And this one was posted under the new Sony 10 to 20 F4 PZ lens, one of the new trio lenses that Sony recently released. Now, this is an interesting dynamic because whether you are a fitness professional or if you're maybe recording clients in a space like this, the name of the game is going to be range and flexibility, meaning making sure that you can actually get the shot in a specific range or focal length, maybe shooting past certain people if you're recording when other people are there or just being able to zoom. So I think a zoom lens would be great in this scenario. The only problem is you usually run into a territory where you're not dealing with something with optical steady shot unless you go into something like let's say the Sony 16 to 35-ish f2.8 lens, but that tends to cost way more than an A6600. However, still a great lens. Could get something like the Tamron 17 to 28 f2.8 lens, but sometimes in really small spaces, even though the Sigma 16, the 17 to 28 f2.8, those lenses are great and sharp, fast, autofocus, amazing. Only problem is sometimes they're not wide enough and there's only so far that you can back up. And that's what I think with the 18 to 300 and these other lenses that I've mentioned so far, it doesn't make for the best recommendation. So what would you do? Now, before you invest in any lenses, there's two things I would suggest. These are two pro tips that I'm gonna give you back to back. Number one, if you have a kit lens, pop it on and do a test run. This by far is the reason why I will always, no matter what camera I get, have some type of a kit lens to work with even before you start investing in other lenses that may be better or more of what you need because it at least gives you a chance to see what focal range, if you're considering a 35 millimeter lens, for example, take that that kit lens and zoom into 35 millimeters and see where would you need to set the tripod or if you're hand holding it and backed up in a corner, what does that look like? And you can zoom all the way to 16, It'd give you an expectation of what the 16 millimeter focal length would look like just so you can see this is how much would be in the shot if I wanna be an arm's length away maybe a little bit closer. So those are the kind of things that I think you would want a kit lens for. So if you have one, put it to the test and see if you need more than 16. Now we are looking into that 10 to 18 F 1.8, the 11 millimeter lens that you have, things like that. The other pro tip would be if you're really not sure on a lens, try lens rentals. We actually have a promo deal for when this video is coming out for lens rentals, that is phenomenal. Now we've been partnered with lens rentals for quite some time and I always make the recommendation even before I had a relationship with them, which was to make sure that if you really don't know what to buy or you're not sure on a camera, you wanna see if it's gonna work for you, rent it. I usually have a coupon code or something or a link that'll give you $25 off or somewhere in the ballpark, maybe 15% off of your first rental. But I use them for myself when I'm doing any of the things that I'm doing and I wanna test the lens and I'm not sure if I wanna buy it. Maybe I just wanna make content with it and then send it back. But in this case, I would recommend renting the lens that I think would be best in this scenario, something like the Tamron 11 to 20 millimeter F2.8 lens. So right now you can actually get 20% off of your rental if you order by February the 24th, 2023, and they're offering a 15% discount on all of their used gear. So this is how I usually factor in my stuff. I will test it maybe for a week, even two weeks. Sometimes I'll extend that out to three, sometimes four weeks, depending on what I'm doing and if that just wasn't enough time. Cool thing is you're just paying the little bit of a difference to extend that date out. You don't have to talk or hassle with anybody. You can just do it on your login account and you're good to go. But for anywhere from like 70, 80 bucks, I can test a lens or a camera out and it adds up obviously if you're doing more, but for 70 to 80 bucks, that's way better than spending six, $700 on a lens that you're not sure if it's gonna work for you. So once you've even rented with it, the cool thing is that second half of like the 15% off of all the used gear, you can actually take a percentage of what you paid towards your rental and actually buy it and keep it. They have a keeper program. So 
I really love Lens Rentals. They are phenomenal. Like I said, they've saved me money. I've talked about them in previous videos, but even if it wasn't Black Friday and all the holiday stuff and all that, I would still highly recommend this company because I know from when I spend my money with them before they knew anything about me, they treated me very, very well. And just, it's very few companies that like truly you get the sense that they care about their people. Lens Rentals is one of those companies. So I definitely back them hundred percent. So you can go to diana.link forward slash lens rentals and put in the coupon code that you see on the screen. I'll actually put those in the description as well. So you can take advantage of that if you decide that renting would be right for you. But once you've tested and tried and seen what the kit lens can do, or if you know 18 just isn't cutting it, 16 still isn't gonna cut it either. I would go with a Tamron 11 to 20 millimeters F 2.8. Because the Sony ZV-E10 can use Sony Catalyst brows, that will allow you to fix any stabilization issues. Yeah, you can turn on active, but that's not for you to be panning the camera and whipping it all over the place. I'm telling you, it'll look like trash. Don't do it. Active stabilization on the ZV-E10 is for when you want to have like tripod handheld shots or you're like making really slow pan stuff like that. That's what active is good for. It's not great for you to be on the move and stuff. So that's at least on the ZV-E10. Great on the ZV-1, phenomenal on the FX30. ZV-E10, not so much. But this is the process that I would say and go through for anybody, depending on what you're doing. That kit lens technique I talked about earlier is just putting it to work. It's a great reason to always just have one in the bag. Maybe it's not what you record the final content with, but it's great for testing spaces and environments to go from 16 millimeters all the way up to 50 or so millimeters or something like that so that you can get the range and see what that's like. It's even sometimes great for like overhead shots or just like that wide shot in the corner thrown up on an older camera or something. It's really cool, honestly. Now we actually got a second subscriber question asking which one would be better when it comes to TikTok, IG Reels, essentially like your vertical video content if you were choosing between the Sony ZV-10 and the A6400. So that video is coming up on the screen. Make sure you check it out and I'll see you over there. Are you an entrepreneur struggling to get your brand noticed through video content? Look no further. The One Right Video is the ultimate guide to creating videos that will amplify your brand and grow your business. It's jam packed with practical tips and strategies to help entrepreneurs just like you succeed in video content creation. Don't let your competition get ahead. Mark your calendar for March 1st and be among the first to get your hands on a copy of the One Right Video. Go to onerightvideo.com. Thank you.